I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. Very, very rocky. Death by government. Drain the swamp. Hello and welcome to another installment of Liberty Nation's Swampanomics videocast. I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. This week, is a recession back on the table? The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta's GDP Now model estimate for the first quarter has been on a downward trend since hitting a peak of 3.5% in late March, touching 1.5% in the first week of April. This has a dreaded R word, the talk of the town, or at least on Wall Street. Many of the leading indicators point to an economic downturn. Of course, since the U.S. endured a quick back-to-back -back quarterly GDP decline in the first half of 2022, which is a technical recession, this has been all that economists and market analysts have been talking about. It is understandable why some do not believe these experts anymore, especially with the U.S. economy adding more than 200,000 jobs per month. But some of the recent statistics should be cause for concern. First, let's take a look at some of the latest banking figures. February witnessed the slowest credit card growth rate in about two years, as revolving credit climbed by just $5 billion, down from $12.8 billion in January. Suffice it to say, following the failures of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, the financial system is being more cautious about extending credit and handing out loans. And so it turns out, consumers are not searching for it anyway. Here is what the Dallas Fed Bank wrote in a recent banking condition survey, quote, Loan demand declined for the fifth period in a row as bankers in the March survey reported worsening business activity. Loan volumes fell, driven largely by a sharp contraction in consumer loans. Credit standards and terms continued to tighten sharply, and market rises in loan pricing were also noted over the reporting period. In addition, the American Bankers Association Index of Credit Conditions declined to the lowest level since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. Leading up to the credit data, other factors suggest that parts of the United States economy were slowing. In February, construction spending and factory orders fell 0.1% and 0.7% respectively. The Institute for Supply Management's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index contracted for the fifth consecutive month, slowing to 46.3. The ISM Services PMI also plunged to 51.2, the worst reading in three months. And then there were the labor numbers. The ISM Manufacturing and Services Employment Subindexes fell. The ADP's private payroll growth eased to 145,000 below economists' expectations of 200,000. Job cuts surged 319% year over year in March, totaling nearly 90,000 layoffs. Continuing jobless claims surged to a better higher than expected 1.823 million. The March jobs report showed a smaller than expected 236,000 new positions. Put simply, not great. And remember, some of the latest data are from the pre-banking crisis economy. Who knows what we will see in the coming weeks and months. Moreover, the results of the Federal Reserve quantitative tightening campaign that started a year ago are beginning to produce rotten fruit. More importantly, the Fed's money supply has contracted for three straight months, sliding more than 2% year-over-year in February. Consider what economists at the Dutch bank ING wrote in a recent report, quote, the rate hike so far, plus financial sector turmoil, will weigh on lending and, consequently, investment and consumption. As a result, we feel more convinced than ever with our recession call for the U.S. economy and a subdued growth forecast for the Eurozone. At this stage, a recession is certain, with even permeable Goldman Sachs raising its downturn odds. What is up for debate, however, is the degree of the recession. Short and shallow, or long and painful? Pick your poison. Of course, no matter what happens, the powers in Washington will ultimately blame it all on one person, Donald Trump. That's it for me this week. Please read my full Swampanomics column on the pages of LibertyNation.com, where I discuss CBDCs, the Fed's balance sheet, and for the love of gold. Thank you. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. Produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is the left free zone. Hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa, Lisa K. K. Donner. Donner. Joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Maggie of authors. Brendan. Deconstructing Ocean leftist narratives. Down debating the hot, hot topics. topics. And remembering to laugh. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe you space. Did that to piss Jeff Liberty off. Nation's The Conservative Five. I'm Andrew Moran, Liberty Nation's economics editor. Very, very rocky. Death by government.